untainted peanut butter. I know people that probably bought peanut butter a year ago and still haven't opened the jar. Five people sick in Minnesota, hundreds more nationwide. Is it in your kitchen? What to look out for? Warning to drivers, new video that will have you thinking twice about moving over on the road. The fight over Anna Nicole Smith's body. What happened in court? It's marketed to save you money. I thought I was getting to something good that would help me. Well, it didn't. But is it a scam? And we start with a Fox Alert, Sky Fox 9, over a school bus accident on 35E near Regions Hospital in St. Paul. There may have been students on that bus at the time of the crash, traffic backing up in the spot. No reports of any injuries so far, but we will bring you more information as it comes into us here at Fox 9 News. And hi, everyone. We appreciate you joining us for Fox 9 News at 5. We also have a warning before you eat your next PB&J. Some peanut butter is making people sick. It's pretty serious. In fact, at least five people in Minnesota are recovering from a salmonella outbreak. First on Fox, Bill Keller's live in St. Paul with what you need to know. Bill. Well, Robin, that first case here in Minnesota was reported as far back as September, the most recent at the end of January. It is a strain of salmonella called Salmonella Tennessee, and it has been traced to a processing plant in Sylvester, Georgia. Nationwide, there have been 288 reported cases of salmonella related to jars of peanut butter, including here in Minnesota. We have five cases that are potentially linked to the outbreak right now, and they began as far back as September. But Smith says the scope of the outbreak is likely much wider. Because in general, for every case of salmonella that we hear about that actually goes to the doctor and gets tested and gets reported, we think there are 38 more. And so, you know, what we hear about is the tip of the iceberg. The contaminated peanut butter was manufactured by ConAgra and sold under the brands Peter Pan and Great Value. It has a product code which starts with 2111. That code number is probably going to be a code number that was used for many months of production. So this is going to affect a, a, a large amount of product. They told us to pull everything. The peanut butter recall has affected at least 39 states, including Minnesota. Grocery stores around the Twin Cities pulled the product off store shelves, including Walmarts, which carry the Great Value brand. The Minnesota Department of Health says peanut butter is not normally associated with foodborne illnesses, and it could be some time before they know how the jars were contaminated. It's processed in a way that generally this is a very safe product. And, and again, the investigation that's done by, by the Food and Drug Administration hopefully is going to be able to determine the cause of the, of the contamination. Now the symptoms will include fever, diarrhea, and abdominal cramps. They can last anywhere from 12 to 72 hours and can take can uh, not set in for as long as a week. Now again, if you have any of those contaminated uh, peanut butter jars that begin with that code 2111, throw those away if you think you may have been sickened by it. The Minnesota Department of Health would like to hear from you. You can call them at 1-877-FOOD-ILL. Live in St. Paul, Bill Keller, Fox 9 News. And you can also find out everything you need to know about the bad peanut butter on our website. Just go to myfox9.com. A deadly crash is backing up traffic in Hastings. The northbound lanes of Highway 61 are closed over the bridge over the Mississippi River. Three cars were involved. Now, this is the second deadly crash in the same area in about a week. Well, this story is just unbelievable. Move over. It is the law. State Patrol hoping amazing video of an officer getting hit will help get that message across. And Fox 9's Rochelle McGinnis is live to show us more of the video and explain why it is so important. Amazing video, Rochelle. Well, that is. And you know, Jeff, drivers know they're supposed to stop at red lights. They know they're supposed to stop at stop signs. And most know what to do when emergency vehicles come up behind them. But there is another law that is just as important that many drivers either don't know or are just plain ignoring. It's something every state trooper knows could be one traffic stop away. We have had a number of troopers in our organization uh, killed by, by these type of incidents. This trooper was struck during a traffic stop last week. He ended up with broken bones and a concussion, but it could have been, and often is, a lot worse. In Minnesota, between 2001 and 2005, 126 troopers were injured in roadside collisions. And just within the past month, six squad cars have been struck by other drivers. The leading cause of death for law enforcement currently in the country are crashes. 
Not getting shot, not getting stabbed. The ambulance is on the way, sir. And troopers aren't the only ones who have to worry. Personally, I had a number of close calls. We're very concerned that we're going to be hit. That's why the move over law was put in place to protect emergency responders who have to work right next to danger. You're relying on thousands of other drivers to keep you safe. You're going to lose. But drivers still aren't getting the message. And drivers are supposed to be aware of all the driving uh, rules of the road. And we just have to we just have to start stepping up our, our enforcement campaign. Here's the deal. When emergency vehicles are on the side of the road, you must move out of the closest lane, leaving at least one lane in between. If you can't move over, you need to slow way down. It's not only common sense, it's the law. It's going to take more public education, and uh, unfortunately, more events are going to happen until that occurs. Now, the State Patrol handed out more than 400 citations last year for people who were not obeying the law. And this year, they plan to increase enforcement even more. Reporting live in Bloomington, Rochelle McGinnis, Fox 9 News. All right, thanks, Rochelle. Incredible. And coming up later, we're going to ask the trooper about that new move-over law. Well, at the Capitol, some lawmakers want to lower the age of prosecution and try teens as adults at the age of 13 instead of 14. It's called Emily's Law. Last year, last June, however, two-year-old Emily Johnson of Fergus Falls died from a severe head injury at her daycare. The 13-year-old assaulted her, but because of his age, he didn't go to prison, and his record could be cleared when he turns 19. Well, Emily's family feels like it's not enough, and they want to help other families in the same situation. They want to seek and see that there's more justice that can be served in the future if somebody, regrettably, unfortunately, hopefully not, would be such stuck in the same situation as they were. Thirteen states have statutes that set the minimum certification below 14 years old. So, what do you think? Should we change the age to prosecute teens as adults? The Fox 9 inbox is open. All you have to do is email us at myfox9.com and click on the Fox 9 inbox. Or you can call us at 952-946-1234. Leave us a message and we'll play or read your comments throughout the newscast. If you're just walking in the door, we have your headlines. At least 40 teachers stand to lose their jobs tonight in School District 191. Burnsville, Egan, and Apple Valley are hoping to save $2.4 million by cutting teachers in the next school year. The Board of Education is meeting to make the final decision tonight. If the cuts go through, class sizes could increase to between 32 and 35 students. And we will have the results of that vote tonight at 9 and 10. A murder-suicide in Richfield involving a seven-year-old boy is leading to questions about why no Amber Alert was issued. Seven-year-old Zachary Wolf was kidnapped by his father, 47-year-old Jeffrey Wagner, on Monday. Now, Zachary was waiting for the school bus at the end of his driveway in Luck, Wisconsin. The pair ended up at the American off of 494. Police found both the father and son dead on Wednesday morning. Initially, we did not feel that the uh, criteria was met, that being that there was a great amount of danger or bodily harm presented to the child. Uh, well, coming up at 5.30, Zachary's mother tells Fox 9 why she feared for her son's life and tried to take action last week. Charges are filed against a man accused of kidnapping his own daughter. Stephen Makuda, a convicted sex offender, is facing five counts, including making terroristic threats and failing to register a change in address. Danielle Makuda was taken from her Invergrove Heights home Monday night. She was found with her father at the Mall of America the next day. A Wisconsin man suspected of killing a hunter has been ordered to stand trial. James Nichols is accused of shooting and stabbing Cha Vang of Green Bay. A judge has ruled prosecutors submitted sufficient evidence to justify three felony charges, including first-degree intentional homicide. Both men were squirrel hunting during the shooting. If you're still planning on getting a flu shot, more vaccine is on the way. An additional 5,000 doses were scheduled to arrive today from emergency stockpiles maintained by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in Atlanta. Five Minnesotans have died from the flu so far this year, four children and an adult. Northwest hoping to fly high financially when the airline emerges from bankruptcy later this year. Top officials with NWA estimate the airline will be worth about $7 billion. The Twin Cities-based carrier plans to pay unsecured creditors roughly three-quarters of what they're owed. That still needs to be approved by the creditors and... A judge. You talk about luck. A Maplewood man wins $25,000 in the North Star Cash Lottery on February 10th. And then, believe it or not, he wins another twenty five dollars grand the next day. Raymond Snuffer Jr. did it by matching five numbers each time. Back-to-back -back lottery wins have never happened before in Minnesota. The odds of winning the jackpot just once, one 
in 170 thousand. So you want to wow. hang out with Mr. Snuff. Yeah, he's want. the man to hang out with. to rub off on you. Well, we're looking out. We got some warm weather. A few degrees. Yeah, it felt a little better out there. Sun's always making it better. Ian Leonard's joining us with a preview of what is to come. Absolutely. The sun does make it feel better. But you talk about the thaw finally arriving from 12 degrees today, mid-30s by Tuesday. But before we get there, we're talking about some strong winds, the possibility of some snow, and things getting a little slushy underfoot. We'll map it out for you with your seven-day forecast here at about 5.15. All right. Thanks, Ian. From comedian to serious candidate. Al Franken's going to be joining us live next. Plus, left in the cold. Yeah, I thought I was getting into something good that would help me. Why the state's taking action against natural gas bill program. Later, why a comic book is causing controversy at one school. In the quiet Minnesota towns at the Canadian border, a multi-million dollar smuggling business is booming. There's a lot of money to be made. Fox 9 investigator Tom Lydon heads north, exposing hundreds of miles of virtually unprotected border. So they're doing what they can to get it across. And how high-powered weed is making its way to Twin Cities suburbs tonight on Fox 9 News at 9. Get away to somewherefox9.com. This is Fox 9 News with Robert Robinson. Jeff Passelt, meteorologist Ian Leonard, and sports with Jim Rich. What do you think? Should the age to prosecute teenagers as adults change? We drop from 14 to 13. You can email us at myfox9.com, click on the Fox 9 inbox, or you can call us at area code 952-946-1234. Go ahead and leave us a message, and we'll play and read your comments throughout our newscast. Well, they thought they were saving money on their gas bill. But the state AG's office thinks it was all a scam. And Fox 9's political reporter Jeff Goldberg is live at the state capitol with the complaint. Jeff, what are you talking about? Well, Jeff, the Attorney General Lori Swanson today filed this complaint uh, with the Public Utilities Commission asking to have the fixed pricing programs ended, saying that many people are feeling powerless. For those who depend on their power most, uncertainty can be the most damaging. I didn't know what was involved and why they were doing this. Rosalind Kinzel lives in Oakdale on a fixed income. She liked the idea of XL's fixed natural gas billing program. I didn't know. But reality shed light on a scam. I thought I was being helped with my bills every month and instead I was paying way more than I was supposed to. According to Attorney General Lori Swanson, Rosalind is one of thousands of victims, mostly seniors on fixed incomes. You're paying for gas that you never used. And to me, it doesn't sound logical. The XL and Centerpoint programs offer fixed rates on natural gas, regardless of price changes. But with those prices constantly dropping, Swanson says customers often pay more than with typical rates. And so it's a little bit like betting on a roulette wheel with a casino that already knows where the number is going to stop. And the numbers are big, according to Swanson, over the past six years. Customers of XL and Centerpoint's fixed natural gas billing programs have paid $26 million more than those with typical rates. Then there's this. If I called them every month and tried to get out, I could not get out. That is one of the reasons Swanson wants the Public Utilities Commission to shut down the programs. I don't know what's going to happen. I have no idea. Rosalind has already lost hundreds, but she got out. Now she wants others to share that power. Maybe this will, will resolve something, which would be good. I'm hoping. Late today, Centerpoint released a statement about its fixed pricing program, saying its value is price certainty. Monthly natural gas bills do not change due to unpredictable weather or fluctuating natural gas prices. Centerport Energy will fully address issues regarding the program when they come before the Public Utilities Commission. We did speak with XL Energy several times this afternoon, but they had not released a statement in time we went on air. Live at the Capitol, Jeff Goldberg, Fox 9 News. All right, thanks, thanks Jeff. Jeff. Freezing cold weather, snow, ice, and nowhere to go. Drivers in Pennsylvania are stranded, waiting it out after a raging nor'easter. Some were stuck on the road overnight for up to 15 hours, and many ran out of gas just trying to keep warm. The National Guard is helping out. They're traveling by plane, same problem. Some lucky folks wound up stuck on the runway for up to 11 hours overnight. And even if you weren't trying to get somewhere, you still had problems. Thousands are still without power. So are we done with the cold weather yet? Well, a lot of people are hoping so. Ian's here to fill us in. 
We are uh, slowly getting into that thaw cycle, slowly here through the weekend. Right now on Weather First Radar, a day filled with sunshine, still well below average high temperatures, but quiet weather. That's all about to change here. From Weather First Radar, temperatures across the state still looking more and more like the beginning of January rather than into February. 16 in Ely, 10 in the Twin Cities, 7 in both Moorhead and Marshall. And this morning you felt it. You felt it through the afternoon as well. Wind chill feels more like minus 2 in the Twin Cities, minus 1 in Brainerd, and minus 13 right now in Alexandria. The 19th straight day of below average high temperatures. Average high is now at 28. Today at 12 degrees, we woke up at minus 5. You want to think about warm. How about the record high? 1921, we topped out at 63 degrees. The three C's overnight tonight. Clear, calm, and cool. And as we move through the day tomorrow, look for clouds to be on the increase. A chance of some late Friday snow before the thaw begins as we head into next week. Here's the clouds increasing from the north and the northwest. A real weak clipper is set to roll through tomorrow night, bringing us a chance of snow. So we'll move from sunshine today, clouds tomorrow afternoon, and a chance of snow uh, as we head, say, deep into tomorrow night and even into Saturday morning. Plenty of clouds off to the north and northwest. You can see how close they are just beginning to move through, say, Fargo and Moorhead. But you talk about the forecast tonight. Start things for you tonight at 10 o'clock. Until about 3 or 4 in the morning, I'd expect this to stay generally clear. A breeze working out of the southwest. Overnight lows just above the freezing mark. 22 for a high tomorrow in Minneapolis. And there you get into this light scattered snow. See the clock Friday night at 10 o'clock. So there is a chance we get into some light snow that will probably hang around into early Saturday morning. Plan the day for you. Wake up with some sunshine. Get into clouds. Slightly milder temperatures by noon. By 3 p.m. we look for a high of 22, slightly milder, and a chance of snow as we roll deep into tomorrow night. The winds are also going to pick up, gusting out of the northwest late tomorrow afternoon into Saturday at about noon at 10 to 20 miles an hour. So when the snow begins to fly, it'll blow around, reduce some visibilities on area roads and highways. We're definitely not looking for a quote-unquote snow storm. However, some patchy light snow showers are a probability Friday night. Now, look as we get through the weekend some sunshine and then the warmer temperatures get here. Uh, the car washes will be swamped. Everyone will be trying to find some of that windshield washer juice to keep things uh, visible as we move through next week. And this weekend, hey, the official meteorologist, Fox 9, of Monster Jam. There you the go. giant yeah. mud pit. Yeah, you have to say it like Great that. It's part digger. of the thing. Hey, we're the official meteorologist. 12 mammoth machines racing against each other in action-packed night. Bring the whole family to this motor spectacular. Kids love it. <laughs> did I do it okay? Did I think you job. got the job. You know what they do, and it's these big trucks. And, you know, if you want to just take it easy and go somewhere where you know it's going to be warm, you're in the dome. There It'll you be go. And love. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Thanks Ian. Ian. Well, comedian turned politician Al Franken wants to be your next U.S. Senator. The DFLer made it official Wednesday and used his first campaign event today to show his support for universal health care. And he's joining us now live from Minneapolis. Al, we appreciate you being with us. So go ahead, tell us what today's event was all about. Well, I, I went to uh, uh, this uh, clinic on Hennepin Avenue where they uh, do uh, provide health care for people who are uninsured or underinsured. And it was really to underline uh, my commitment to getting to universal health care and making sure that everybody in this country has affordable health care. Yesterday when you made your announcement, you made it clear that Paul Wellstone is an idol of yours. You've been following politics for many, many years, active in it, but at the same time mocking it on Saturday Night Live. Do you think that works for you or against you? Well, I think that, uh, you know, Minnesotans who haven't listened to my radio show or read my books uh, are entitled to be skeptical about whether I'm serious or not. I think people who've done both of those know that I'm, I'm substantive. And, uh, but, but I have 21 months to, to prove that I, I, I take this very, very seriously. And, uh, you know, I grew up in St. Louis Park, uh, sort of lower middle class, working class family. Uh, my wife uh, grew up uh, in a family where she lost her father and her mother was uh, widowed with five little kids and they made it through social with social security survivor benefits uh, i care about these issues because they're i i care about them because they happen to my family those are the basis for your platform so what is it that you think you can do for the state of minnesota that needs to be done 
Well, I think I can lead. I think I can lead on these issues, on renewable energy. I hope that when I get to the Senate, or if I get to the Senate, that uh, we're not still dealing with Iraq, but I, I've been to Iraq four times. I have, uh, I, I have a good plan for uh, what we need to do there, which I think is a, a partition of the country. Uh, I think we need to do a regional conference. I need, we need to redeploy our troops, some inside the country, some to Kuwait and Qatar, and some to Afghanistan, which is in danger of uh, being, a, uh, that operation's in danger of failing. Uh, we need to put pressure on Maliki to deal with the Sunnis in terms of giving them their share of the oil, the reconciliation, to address the uh, debathification. And I think we need to hold the re senators, the Republican senators who gave Bush a blank check for the last four years on this war, I think we need to hold them accountable. Well, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, you have a real stiff uh, competition from Mike Cerisi, the attorney who's been involved in DFL politics, as well as Norm Coleman. You've got about 10 seconds to tell us how you can do there. Well, with Mike, I think any Democrat that's in this will, will contrast our vision with norms, and I, I think that, uh, and, and support the other, no matter what happens. All right, and as a St. Louis Park native, you made it to the list of the people who made it big. I'm on the one that people didn't do so well, but we congratulate you. Oh, I'm All sorry. Right. <laughs> okay. I knew he'd get a kick out of that. <laughs> you know what? One thing for sure, 2008 is going to be interesting with him running for office. It sure is, definitely. One week since her death, the battle over Anna Nicole Smith's remains may finally be getting somewhere. Plus, California has a man-made waterfall and wide geysers shooting 50 feet in the air. And later, from what to eat to how they dress, the new favorite to keep your pet in check. But first, strap on oh. your ski report. What he doesn't things. like so. <laughs> It can save you money. It can also save you a call to the tow truck guy. Factory value parts. Made to factory specs. Priced to yours. It's Schneiderman's President's Day sale. Unprecedented savings on our entire inventory. Plus no payment, no interest till 2008, or we'll pay the sales tax. Experience an extraordinary sale of fine home furnishings going on now at Schneiderman's President's Day sale. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. from Brad Garrett's past is exposed. Spank me like I stole money from mommy's purse. To the... Tonight at 7 on Fox 9. In the aftermath of tragedy, someone is slowly slipping away. How will the O.C. end? Tonight at 8 on Fox 9. If you just got home, here are your Just Home headlines. A crime scene unit scouring the Bohemian home where Anna Nicole Smith lived they didn't say what they were looking for, but officers were seen taking photographs. It's been about a week since the model died in Florida. The biggest battles now are where her body will be buried and who will get custody of her five-month-old daughter, Danny Lynn. A judge ordered another DNA sample be taken from Smith's body. Michael Waltrip's apologizing for his team's role in what's being called NASCAR's biggest cheating scandal. The two-time Daytona 500 winners losing two key crew members after NASA, NASCAR penalized the crew for using a fuel additive. Walter's team was one of five busted this week for breaking the rules. He was also fined $100,000. Hey, don't forget the Super Bowl racing. The Daytona 500 is at 3 o'clock right here on Fox 9 Sunday. Well, a big success for coalition forces. The Iraqi government says the local leader of al-Qaeda was wounded in a clash north of Baghdad. And President Bush is planning to send more soldiers to Afghanistan, thinking al-Qaeda and the Taliban will launch a fresh wave of attacks when the winter ends. The House of Representatives is still discussing a non-binding resolution opposing a troop surge in Iraq. That could be approved by tomorrow. An anti-war comic book could soon be stirring up controversy in San Francisco classrooms. It's called Addicted to War, Why the U.S. Can't Kick Militarism. And nothing is off limits in it. It shows Ronald Reagan hugging Osama bin Laden and cartoons of the Abu Ghraib prison scandal. The books are being donated by a local anti-war activist. The topic is one that a lot of teachers would have an interest in bringing into the classroom. It in no way, in no way focuses in on the reality of uh, American security, the terrorist threat, and what our nation is doing to confront it, which is very serious material. 
There's no word if or when they actually will make it into the school system there. A California driver is all wet after their car slams into a fire hydrant. Now, the car took part of the hydrant right off and it sent a geyser of water nearly 50 feet up into the air. It took L.A. the fire department to get things under control. You can't do that one by yourself. That mm -hmm. was a mess. Yeah, well, maybe in a week or so we'll be wanting to drive under that yeah, and off our car. Well, there are new developments after a father and son are found dead in a hotel room. Plus, interstate ice rink dash cam video captures drivers trying to gain control, and Ooh. we're going to tell you it's unbelievable because no one was hurt. And later, from beer to a workout, we've got the inside scoop on the newest trends for your dog or your cat. It's inside there, buddy. Get yeah, it. Get it Go out ahead. There. Breaking news. The standoff's going on. Weather first. Snow, freezing rain, and ice. Exclusive stories. Tonight, we go in-depth. That's the power of Fox 9 News at 10. Transform your tired room into one that's magnificent with a fireplace from Fireside Hearth and Home. And right now, through March 17th, you can take advantage of incredible home show values and special financing. Fireside Hearth and Home. Discover your dream fireplace. Here's a money-saving idea to start the year off right. Quest has a challenge for you, a challenge to save money. Do the math and add up what you're spending on high-speed internet, cable TV, local and long-distance service. Then see what you could save by combining those services with Quest. Get blazing fast downloads with Quest high-speed internet, incredible sound and picture quality with direct TV service, and reliable digital voice, all for under $98 a month. Compare what you currently have to the quality and value of Quest. You'll see, there's no comparison. In fact, if you're not bundling with Quest, you may be spending too much. Why pay more than you have to? Get everything you need from Quest, all for under $98 a month. Call now and see what you could save by combining services with Quest. Compare, bundle, and save. That's our spirit of service. Transform your tired room into one that's magnificent with a fireplace from Fireside Hearth and Home. And right now, through March 17th, you can take advantage of incredible home show values and special financing. Fireside Hearth and Home. Discover your dream fireplace. Now, on Fox 9 News. Developments in an apparent murder-suicide after a father and son are found dead in a hotel room. Contaminated peanut butter. Are your sandwiches and stomach at risk? Dog and cat lovers, listen up. Bright colors is what I'm seeing this year. And then for puppies, a lot of pastels. We have the hottest trends and products for pets. We don't even have bag. our bag packed yet, so. A big winter storm is no match for a set of newborn triplets. Live from the Fox 9 studios, here are Robin Robinson and Chef Passelt. Hi again, everyone. We're learning more tonight about that murder-suicide involving a father and his seven-year-old son. The two drove from Wisconsin to a motel in Richfield where both were found dead yesterday. The boy is from Luck, Wisconsin. That's about 70 miles northeast of the Twin Cities, and that's where Fox 9's Karen Scullin is live. And Karen, answer this. Why wasn't an Amber Alert issued in this case? Well, that is the big question. You know, after fighting between the parents of seven-year-old Zachary Wolf. You know, there's a lot of questions at this point that are unanswered. The battle, of course, came to a tragic end with the murder of seven-year-old Zachary. And as you said, the family is asking a lot of questions why nothing was done to stop it, including an Amber Alert. Seven-year-old Zachary Wolf was kidnapped and killed by his father, 47-year-old Jeffrey Wagner. It's a tragedy no one can comprehend, and the sheriff's office never thought would happen. That's why there was no Amber Alert. Initially, we did not feel that the... Uh criteria was met, that being that there was a great amount of danger or bodily harm presented to the child. Uh, all indications was from the family that uh, Mr. Wagner would never harm his son. But the boy's mom tells Fox 9 she was scared for her son's life. Just last week, she petitioned for a restraining order after a number of threatening emails were sent to her. In court papers, she wrote, I fear he is going to harm Zach because of his hatred for me. What does it take? I think there's a question between the danger and just in prohibiting the, the other biological parent from having custody of the child. Did the mother tell the sheriff's office that she felt her child was in danger? No. Even so, the sheriff says when Zach wasn't returned to school Tuesday as promised by Wagner, he put several investigators on the case. Wednesday morning, they traced the pair to the American in Richfield, but it was too late. Wagner had killed his son, then himself. 
Ed Wunsch is with the nonprofit group Parental Abduction Child Recovery Team. Um, I've seen the estimates. Usually, they're between five and ten percent. Some of the some of the experts are estimating that it's twenty or thirty percent of the cases that the children are seriously injured or killed. He says parental abductions are about control. In one of many threatening emails filed with the court, Wagner writes, "Someday you will not be able to start arguments with me, deny visitation, or any of that other negative you do that affects my relationship with Zachary. Who are you going to try and control then?" I'd love to be a fly on the wall when that day comes. Now, the cause of death is still under investigation while police await autopsy results. We're live in Polk County. Karen Scullin, Fox 9 News. All right, thanks, Karen. A major recall could have you digging in your cupboards. It's for peanut butter, and it's already affecting Minnesotans. Fox 9's Bill Keller is joining us live in St. Paul with what's happening there, Bill. Well, Jeff, nationwide, there have been nearly 300 cases of salmonella related to contaminated jars of of uh, Peter Pan peanut butter. Now, of five cases here in Minnesota, only one of those had to be hospitalized, but here at the Department of Health, they say that for every one person that is confirmed, there are at least 38 that uh, may, not, may, may also be out there as well. Now, the bacteria outbreak is a strain called Salmonella Tennessee, and it has been traced to a processing plant from Canagra in Sylvester, Georgia. Today, grocery stores around the Twin Cities pulled products off store shelves, Peanut butter is not normally associated with foodborne illnesses, and it could be some time before the FDA knows just how those jars were contaminated. It's processed in a way that generally this is a very safe product. And, and again, the investigation that's done by, by the Food and Drug Administration hopefully is going to be able to determine the cause of the, of the contamination. Now that peanut butter was manufactured by ConAgra and sold under the brand's Peter Pan and Great Value, which is usually found at Walmart stores. It also has a production code, which starts with 2111. Again, if you've got any of these jars in your cabinet, throw them away. If you think anyone may have gotten sick from them, the Minnesota Department of Health would like to hear from you. They've got a toll-free number, 877-FOOD-ILL. Live in St. Paul, Bill Keller, Fox 9 News. Thanks, Bill. Humans aren't the only ones who need to watch out. The FDA has also announced salmonella has been found in wild kitty cat food, specifically frozen chicken with clam recipe, mm. in the one-pound plastic containers. Pet owners can also get sick from it if they handle the food or touch pets that have come in contact with that product. So look out. Remember, you can find all of the information about the recalls on our website at myfox9.com. At the state capitol, a debate on what age someone can be tried as an adult. It's 14 years old in Minnesota, but some lawmakers want to change that to 13, and they're calling that Emily's Law. Last June, two-year-old Emily Johnson of Fergus Falls died from a severe head injury at her daycare. The 13-year-old who assaulted her didn't go to prison because of his age. And we want to know what you think. Should the age change to prosecute teens as adults? I think the law to begin to charge 13-year-olds as adults for murder is a knee-jerk reaction. You have to take into consideration that incarcerating children are not your only option. At age 13, you know better and you know what you're doing, and I definitely think that the law should be passed. Thanks for your calls. We're also getting some emails. And one viewer writes, okay, we lower it to 13. Then if a 12-year-old commits a crime, do we lower it again? Maybe we could just do away with childhood. Thanks for writing. Well, we heard from Al Franken earlier, and now it's equal time for Senator Norm Coleman, who's proposing a package of bills aimed at improving rural health care. He wants to increase money for critical access hospitals and mental health services in rural areas. In all, Coleman's behind seven separate bills, some he introduced in the previous congressional session. Let's check on the weather. All right. Ian's here to fill us in. A day of below average temperatures again. It works out to the 19th straight day. A high to a today of 12. Average high at 28. So you're saying, Ian, you know, we've been talking about a warm-up. Is it actually coming? A high today of 12. Average high of 28. Hey, what is this? 34 by next Tuesday. Although, as we get to the warmer temperatures, we have to get through some gusty winds and a chance of snow. I'll show you what's happening with the regional forecast here in about 15 minutes. All right, Thanks. see you in a little bit. Mother Nature is moving the earth. Up next, homes hanging on edge. How it's affecting the people who live inside. Plus. That's incredible what happens when a highway turns into an ice rink. You can see it's all caught on tape.
Pay very close attention to the following announcement. Now through the end of the month, your five Twin Cities Honda dealers are offering 0.9% financing on new Honda trucks and SUVs. 0.9% on every Ridgeline. American Family Insurance is proud to honor February as Black History Month. I'm Robin Robinson. Fox 9 and I are proud to honor black Minnesotans who have made important contributions for all Minnesotans and to our country. Manny Jackson's proof you don't have to ball to be a basketball star. Jackson moved from Honeywell's boardroom to the hard court when he bought the Harlem Globetrotters in 1993. Celebrating our black history with American Family Insurance. All your protection under one roof. Care has a color. Personal attention has a shape. Personal attention also has this shape. American Family is the first insurance company with agency certified by J.D. Power & Associates. Your American Family agent is committed to doing everything possible to make sure you're satisfied. It's personal service on a whole different level. And it only comes in this color and this shape. American Family Insurance. Feels like I get this same cold every year. So I got the same nighttime medicine I always get, but I was still congested. So it wasn't the same. Many cold medicines have changed. NyQuil no longer has a decongestant. Tylenol Cold does. It helps relieve more of your worst cold symptoms. And it helps you sleep. It's one more step towards a pain-free world. Stop. Think. Tylenol Cold. Why have pleasant dreams when you can have beautiful dreams? Why can't a man save the day? Why shouldn't your closet fit your clothes? And why can't it help you get dressed? Who says you can't hog a different cover every night? Why can't we just hide if we want to? Why does it feel so good to snooze? Take your bedroom home today. Get a special 12-month financing offer when you pay with your IKEA credit card. In the quiet Minnesota towns at the Canadian border, a multi-million dollar smuggling business is booming. There's a lot of money to be made. Fox 9 investigator Tom Lydon heads north, exposing hundreds of miles of virtually unprotected border. So they're doing what they can to get it across. And how high-powered weed is making its way to Twin Cities suburbs tonight on Fox 9 News at 9. Fox 9 News at 5 continues. A construction accident sends five workers to the hospital. The men were on the roof of a Charlotte, North Carolina home when it collapsed. The fall, 40 feet. Mm. They were all rushed to the hospital. The extent of their injuries not being released. And OSHA's been brought in to find out exactly what happened. You can hear the oohs and ahs. Mother Nature making changes to the small town of Stevenson, Washington. For about a week, a hillside has been giving way. Mud, rocks and mud and trees came crashing down. Neighbors said it sounded like fireworks. The mess has forced evacuations throughout the area. An ice-covered road turns into a night of terror for some drivers in Kentucky. Can you imagine being caught in that? The series of events caught by a police car's dashboard camera. Twin trailer, Federal Express truck sliding sideways, first hitting one vehicle and then another. A second semi also lost control and followed the exact same route. Amazingly, no one was seriously injured. Yeah, the video was amazing, but more amazing than no one was no hurt. No one was hurt. Incredible. Yeah, well, Minnesota State Patrol dash cameras captured an officer getting hit. Coming up next, you can see that video and a warning in our weekly segment, Ask the Trooper. That's unbelievable, too. Plus, the latest and greatest products for your pet. And you can find them right here in town. An unmentionable act. For children, I think we should spend the money on intensive therapy and not prison. There should be justice. A kid should be punished at the age of 13, tried as an adult. They just get younger and younger and think they can do what they want. Thanks for calling. Well, the State Patrol wants you to remember two words. Move over. Six troopers have been struck by vehicles since January 21st. And Lieutenant Mark Peterson's here just like every Thursday to show us and to tell us what can happen if you don't obey the law. Now, we saw the video of the trooper. It, that is the scariest video I have seen in some time. You know, Robin, it's very graphic. And unfortunately, it's something that happens all too often. Not only to troopers, but to members of the law enforcement oh. community. Now, this trooper is out checking the roadway like we do every day through storms. He's walking up, talking to the motorist, and this person comes along 
loses control of their vehicle, spins out, and as you can see here, this is very, very graphic. And be it not, be it for just a couple inches, one way or the other, we could have a triple fatal right here. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you know, fortunately, the trooper, you know, you can see here as the, as the video goes, he's rolling down to the right mm -hmm. because uh, I talked to Trooper Ferris, and he said one of the first things in his mind was I had to get up off the ground onto my feet because he was afraid that car was going to run over him. That's what was that was go that's what was going through his mind. I got to stay upright, otherwise I'm going to die. Now. This isn't unique, and because this happens very, very often. You know, we had the snowstorm uh, uh, the week before last for three days with a lot of weather, and we had had a series of crashes. I think it was 807 mm -hmm. over a 72-hour period, and we had a number of squad accidents. And that storm, we had approximately four. So when the storms come, we know that's going to happen. And it's not only for troopers, but ambulance drivers, tow company drivers, and firefighters. When you see the red lights, move one lane away or reduce your speed. Well, you know, Lieutenant, we say this all the time, and everybody says, oh, yeah, those poor troopers, whenever we see the video. But people don't think this costs us, too. It's, it's pain physically for all these people. It's a pain in our pocket that we're going to have to pay for this, too, right? Absolutely. The number one workers' comp claim for the Minnesota State Patrol are lower back and neck injuries. And what you see right here is why. And then you can talk about the cost in equipment that goes to back to the taxpayers because obviously we still have to be out there lost labor so the, the other thing i want people to remember is the leading cause of death for law enforcement are traffic crashes across the nation it is not horrific violence getting shot getting stabbed anything of that nature it is traffic crashes in the minnesota state patrol's 77 year history we have lost eight troopers killed in the line of duty five have been because of crashes so obviously we're talking about something that's very near and dear to us, our work zone. So again, it's the law. When you see those red lights ahead of you down the road, move one lane away when you can. If not, reduce your speed. So to sum up, move over, slow down, look out for the troopers, save some lives, and also save about a million dollars a year. Oh, absolutely, Robin. Thanks for the opportunity. Okay, Lieutenant Mark Peterson, thanks for joining us. You bet. Now, if you have a question for the trooper, all you have to do is log on to our website at myfox9.com. That was amazing video. It's very scary. <laughs> the fact that he even rolled over and stood mm -hmm. up. You could see him standing up. Thank God the, they're all oh alive. Goodness, yeah. mm -hmm. Well, for many people, your pet is part of the family, so nothing but the best is going to do. And that means keeping on top of the newest trends and toys on the market. And Fox 9's Marty Hughes is joining us now with a few new favorites. Yeah, well, you don't have to go far to find what's hot in pet fashion or food, for that matter. In fact, we took a trip to a local pet store and a popular chain. The visit unleashed a paw full of hot treats. But only one ribbon, and it goes to that beautiful spaniel, and understanding that this is all about her. More often than not, man's best friend becomes man's luckiest friend. Fuck at the moon. <laughs> Painted paws to the best in designer fashion. These days, dogs and cats have it pretty good. There are treats of every size, shape, and flavor. Toys for chewing and toys for squeak. One pet shop even came up with a non-alcoholic beer for dogs made from beef extract and malt. Since there's no shortage of options, we've compiled a few new favorites this year. Every cat needs its mouth, right? At PetSmart, these new cat houses cost anywhere from 5 bucks to 200 The Twizzler teaser gives your cat a workout, while this non-toxic pet grass keeps them busy. Oliver gives the grass a paws up. <laughs> For your dog, these trendy elevated bowls are good for large breeds. The height keeps them from breathing in too much air when they eat. But the real hit, a brand new toy called the IQ Cube. Dogs like to rip stuff apart, and it gives them an opportunity to do that without actually destroying the toy. <laughs> At Herb Animal in Uptown, Gertie the Pitbull Boxer finds the perfect oh, pair of shoes. Oh, yes, your dog needs to be in fashion. Coats, shoes, pajamas. These boots from Griptex protect Gertie's feet from the elements. They come in a variety of sizes and colors, but they will cost you $75. And since Gertie is such a sport, she gets to try some fancy treats. This chicken wrapped around fruit is a surefire and healthy hit. And to work off the snack, a new flash and fetch ball, also at Herb Animal. It's easy to spot and, well, a ball of flashy fun. They have a lot of energy and in the winter time it's hard to get outside a lot the time for them to have something to do to chew on so 
lots of options out there, and I've got to tell you, Gertie was not happy with us about the booties. They were a few sizes too big, and so that's why she was going like this. But she was cute while she did it. <laughs> pet experts say keeping your pet looking nice is just as important as keeping them happy. They say make sure to buy products to clean their teeth, comb their hair, even clip their nails. But be careful. You have to know what you're doing when you do that as well. Yeah. In the newsroom, I'm Marnie Hughes, Fox 9 News. Back hey, to you guys. Yeah, Marnie. you got to make sure that we do that, too. If our yeah, it's like I don't like so. these. Uh -huh. ah. no, it's cute to watch anyway. Sorry, Gertie. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what can we expect this weekend for the weather? He's got the seven-day forecast. Well, we've been talking about a warm-up. Uh, before we get to the warm-up, though, we have to talk at least a chance of snow late, late tomorrow night. Now, the map here is set for 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. You can see the snow trying to move in from the west. 22 in the Twin Cities and Wilmer. 20 in St. Cloud and Cambridge. It's running about 10 degrees warmer than we were today. 17 in Bemidji. 21 in Brainerd. We'll move from some sunshine first thing in the morning. Cloudy periods through the noon hour into a mainly cloudy late afternoon, leading to a chance of some light snow late, late tomorrow night into early Saturday morning. These would be light snow showers at best, but a slightly milder day as we work through tomorrow afternoon in a high near 22. The winds are going to pick up gusting out of the northwest, say 10 to 20 miles per hour in conjunction with the passage of that light snow. So we'll get into some wind chill first thing Saturday morning. And then, ah, that's all you can say when you look at those temperatures. <laughs> uh -huh. 34 degrees by Tuesday. The car washes will be jammed. I am mm -hmm. so guilty of this. You're supposed to wash your car, take the salt, the muck, the grime off. I have a white car, but right now, jet It's black. hiding. Is it yeah. hiding all the dirt? Hiding all the dirt. Yeah. It, looks, it looks like it. It'll be nice for us all to climb out of the freezer. Yeah. It's a, a kind of a beige, yeah. Make sure you have a lot of rugs around the house, too, when you have that slop. Yeah. Oh, all right. Dog. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, in this corner, a big word of storm. And in this corner, triplets. Up next, how the snow doesn't stop the three babies making their big entrance. It's Schneiderman's President's Day Sale. Unprecedented savings on our entire inventory. Plus, no payments, no interest till 2008, or we'll pay the sales tax. Experience an extraordinary sale of fine home furnishings going on now at Schneiderman's President's Day Sale. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United News at 5 continues. You know, we get blizzards from time to time, but it can't put everything on hold. Especially when it comes to the birth of triplets. An Indiana couple having to drive through some pretty rough conditions to make it to the hospital. Now, it usually takes about 10 minutes, but the snow added another 20 to the commute. It was kind of relaxing it was kind for of us. Relaxing. It was okay. We weren't speeding or anything. Yeah. I don't he, know. he asked me if we had the cell phone, just, just in case we were to slide off the road or something. <laughs> Well, it's a good thing that the new parents made it to the hospital when they did, because an hour later, here came their boys, Atticus, Jackson, and Finn. They're cute. Mm -hmm. They look pretty and, active. Uh, unique names, yeah. too. Coming up tonight at 9. Fox 9 News exposes how a multi-million dollar smuggling business is making its way from Canada to Twin Cities suburbs, and why hundreds of miles of border are virtually ignored. And you see that, and you can also log on this evening at myfox9.com and catch the weathercast over mm -hmm. here, too. That's right. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here at 9 and 10. Access Hollywood's up next. On your mark, get set.